and as a franchise, Zalmi are, are, are brilliant. You know, they're very welcoming. Right. Um, <laughs> just the local tea. Yeah, everybody says that. Like when you come to Pakistan, you have to have it have tea. one of those cricketers that sort of operates below the radar. Like when we think of what you've done for Peshawar Zalmi, you've played some, some crucial knocks. It was that game against Islamabad where you hit uh, a four of the last delivery, a match-winning knock uh, against Quetta. Is that how you like to be? Like, you know, just sort of below the radar, doing your job? Don't yeah. really need all, the atten- <laughs> all that kind of glitz and glamour yeah. and attention. Oh, listen, I'm probably, yeah, obviously I'm... Um, not the most talented of cricketers sometimes, but you know I try and work hard in um, and read read game situations and, and try and, and try and win games. Um, and you know that's what I, that's what I try and do. Yeah, it doesn't always work, but yeah, I always try my best. But I mean, you said you like to stick to your limitations, but I'm sure you know there have been plenty of great cricketers who haven't been naturally talented, but they've gone on to do to do wonderful things. Yeah, without doubt. Um, as I said, I'm, you know, I, I watch some players play and think, you know, wow, how how do you do that? And I think I'd love to be able to do that. But um, I'm very realistic as as a player, and you know, I know my my strengths and also my weaknesses as well. And um, I think to be successful at this level, you have to, you know, be very game aware and and you know, read match situations. And I think that's something that I I can do well in. Um, I think that's something I've done well throughout my career. Now, before we get to your time in Pakistan playing for Peshawar Zalmi, I want to start from the beginning. Why were you drawn to cricket? How did it all begin? I mean, was it like um, the, the normal thing, like playing in the backyard with uh, with your family and then getting slowly yeah. getting into yeah, school little, and county cricket? Yeah, a little bit. Um, yeah, I, my dad, my dad obviously played a lot of cricket um, at, at my club in, in Wiltshire called Go Taker. So. I'd always go there in the summer. Um, I'd always go and you know watch him from a very young age. So I think that's how I would have, that's how I got into cricket. Um, and to be fair, at school, um, I, I didn't really play at school because my school didn't really play. Um, it was more sort of football, cricket. Um, you know that, that sorry, football, rugby, mm-hmm. and not cricket. So um, it's one of those things where it was just you know through my dad, and then um, the older I got, I started playing sort of more league cricket for Go Taker and. Um, and then I eventually played for Hampshire age groups, and that's you know that's when it all sort of started getting serious. So when you played a little bit in the backyard, who, 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 which cricketer were you? Did you pretend oh. to be I don't oh. know Ian Botha oh, no. maybe? No, Nasser, no, no, no. Alex Stewart, um, is it something like that? I think oh, I think you just at that age you don't, you just play, don't you? You just try and copy people on TV. I don't really remember when I was really young who was on TV then. Um, but you just try and play and have fun with your friends and. I think that you know the older I got, um, obviously watching Shane Warne yeah. was amazing to see what he could do in the game. Um, and there's there's so many players that you watch on TV. It's hard to name them now, but mm. you just want to have fun in the back garden and, and enjoy yourself. And as you know, a kid, that's back, what I did. In the back garden, I'm not sure if you remember it. So I was a huge cricket fan growing up. So we had this biggish garden in Islamabad where I grew up. I used to be Ian Austin. Oh, from remember Lancashire. Him yes, from yes, Lancashire. Yes. Yeah, he played the '99 World I Cup. I remember. Yeah. I, I I don't know why I would. I liked no, him. He liked him, and yeah, try and copy him. I think that's that's the great thing about cricket now that there's there's so much on TV. There's so many good mm-hmm. players about that. Kids growing up now, you know, are going to be able to watch their heroes that you know that play a lot of international cricket and and try and copy what they do, which is only a good thing for cricket and for the sport in general. So you're a part of this generation where uh, England batsmen, England cricketers, are more prone to risk taking, whereas back. And I discussed this with Tom as well, Tom Banton in the 70s and the 80s, where it was all about you know getting your head in the right position, <laughs> you know playing the cover drive, foot to the, foot to the ball, body forward, left arm high. But now, I mean, you have to you're, you're almost told to innovate, get the scoreboard ticking, power hitting, look to play big shots. Def- so it must be exciting no, being a part of that. Definitely, um, I think you know I think if you're a, if you want to play for England now as a as a as an out and out batter, you have to be able to to do that. Um, you know, for me, I'm very realistic where I am. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, if I play for England, I'm going to play as a, as a bowler, as a bowling all rounder. But people coming through now that want to get into the England team in in one day cricket. Yeah, sure. Um, what would you would you like green tea or uh, a cup of tea? I'm all right, thank you. I'm very good. 
Um, yeah, so the people coming in now that want to play for England, they have to play that brand of cricket that has been so successful over the years, over the last four years, that attack, the attacking way to play. And I think if you're not prepared to, to do that, then it's obviously going to be quite hard to get into that England team. Right. Well, I'm going to pour you a cup of tea. You need to try it. <laughs> Just the local tea. Yeah. Everybody says that. Like when you come to Pakistan, you have to have, it, have tea. Lovely. I know it's a cliche, but um, try it. Do we have milk? Yeah, yeah, I've got milk here. You guys love your tea back home, don't you? Yeah, I'm more of a, York, we got more of a Yorkshire, Yorkshire tea sort of man for me. Do you take sugar? No sugar. Yeah, I'm just having green tea. A bit more milk, I think. Really, I like it strong. Yeah. Bit of brown sugar. Let's no sugar for me. No, no sugar? No. Oh, well done. On a, on a diet. So, I mean, uh, being an England cricketer now, as, we, as I asked you this before, like growing it's up. It's a great drop. Not bad, right? Lovely. Who were your role models? Like when you played for Hampshire, I mean, Shane Warne was around, I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, Sean, uh, Sean Udall was a fine spinner. He toured he Pakistan was, yeah, as yeah, well. Yeah. Your um, left arm spinner, so perhaps you looked up to Ashley Giles. Uh, was, like I that. think when I, was, when I was growing up at Hampshire, I think there was, a, there was actually a, a lot of good senior players there. Um, you know, when I was 16, 17, as you say, there was Sean Udell there, who was, yeah. who still now is a very good friend. Um, mm -hmm. I speak to him very often. Um, so, um, Shane Warne was there my first year. I didn't only play one game with him, um, and then he left. But there was, there was a bit, there's been a lot of players over the years that have, have been really good at Hampshire, and people like Neil McKenzie um, when mm, he was there, batting-wise. Um, Simon Katic was there. We've had some really, really good players that, you know, when I was growing up, you could really tap into their brains and um, and just speak to about cricket mm. because they've had, they've got a wealth of experience, you yes. know, in, in all over yeah. the, in all over the world, and they're fantastic people as well. Something you do very well and we've seen this when you've uh, batted especially for Zalmi you you seem to absorb absorb pressure extremely well is that because <laughs> of uh, your time in Hampshire or is it something that just comes naturally to do to you are you not just overawed by situations no I think you you're under pressure every time you play you know for, for your team or for your franchise because you know you're being paid to try and win games of cricket so um, yeah there's pressure and I think as a professional sportsman that um, you've got to try and handle that pressure. Some days you're going to do it better than others, um, and, and some days, you know, sometimes it, the pressure might get to you. Um, but it's trying to bounce back from that and trying to, you know, back your training, and hopefully, again, in, in a game, it pays off. Right. So the 2019 World Cup, you were a part of the squad. Now we all saw the game. We all know exactly <laughs> what happened. That's not what I want to talk about. I want to talk about the celebrations <laughs> after the game. Very quiet. Yeah. No. <laughs> Liar. <laughs> no, 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 no. It was it was good fun. Um, yeah, it was obviously we won, um, and that super over was amazing. And the, the celebrations were for the next couple of days. But we were very lucky. We had all our families there, which was nice. Um, we spent. I think they all came into the change room and the long room at Lords, which was which was really nice because not many people get to do that. Um, and we just had a big party. No, it must have been an amazing moment. It was. It was unbelievable. I mean, yeah. to experience that. You know, I, I know I didn't play in the competition, um, but to be in that squad and experience a World Cup in England was was amazing. The hype around it all, the the, the new people actually got into cricket after mm -hmm. that final was, you know, was was amazing. People mm -hmm. were talking about it. It was actually probably as big as football, um, you know, for a, for a few months, yeah. which you don't really get in England. Um, so, yeah, it was amazing. The celebrations were good fun. Um, but as a whole, the whole tournament was, was great fun as well. I think, right. I think it was needed for, for English cricket because, as Definitely. you said, you know, the top sport is football. That World Cup win and the manner in which it happened is sort of about England cricket, English cricket back on the map, I guess. In, Definitely. In a way. Yeah, I think cricket's always been, you know, always been behind football in England, yeah. you know, because everyone's brought up to love football. And, you know, I love football myself. Mm -hmm. But yeah. What I team think, do you support? Uh, uh, Southampton fan. Right. So we're um, going all right in a minute. Um, <laughs> yeah. um, but no, I think the the way I think building to that World Cup was four years. You know, it was a long four-year process, and I think there was a lot of hard work gone into that. And to have it in your home country and then obviously lift the World Cup, I think for the whole nation and for cricket, it was a, a huge mm -hmm. thing. And you know, it did put cricket, you know, very high up in you know in the people's thoughts for you know for for a while, which is brilliant. How have you liked Pakistan so far? You you've been here before. Now we're uh, in Islamabad. What have you made of it so far? Have you enjoyed your time? I really enjoy coming here. Um, as I said, I've been here. This is my third time now um, at the PSL. So, so, so I, I know what the culture is about. I know what to expect. Um, so yeah, I really enjoy it. Um, the people are lovely. 
I really enjoy the food as well. Um, yeah. The paratas and the bread. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> so that's nice. Um, but yeah, it's brilliant. And and as a franchise, Zalmi are, are, are brilliant. You know, they're very welcoming. Um, you know, there's there's never any pressure put on the players um, from the owner, or from the coach. Um, you know, we're all in it together, and we're all we're all trying to you know win games of cricket for the fans and for the franchise. So as I said, it's brilliant to to come here again in Pakistan and yeah. obviously see more of the country as well because I've never yeah. been to Islamabad, I've never been to Multan, so. Um, it's it's nice to yeah. travel around and we're going to take you to the mountains to eat a bit. So just have one cheat day. Yeah, yeah and contrary to popular opinion, <laughs> no, the enjoy food doesn't food. give you the runs. <laughs> yeah, I forgot my birthday so today. I completely so forgot. It's your birthday today. Yeah. Oh, happy birthday! Yeah, I completely forgot to be oh, fair. Brandon, so, yeah. <laughs> you could have mentioned that. Here. You would have done something. I completely forgot. You could yeah. have mentioned that. No, no, no. Well, happy birthday. Thank you very much. Now, tell me uh, just a little bit about your your family life. Tell us a little bit about family that. life. Yeah, so I've got a wife called Sophie. Um, Lovely. She's nice. We've been together for a long time. We got married um, in October 2017. Don't mm -hmm. want to get that wrong, do I? Yeah, yeah, don't <laughs> do that. Don't do that now. A <laughs> um, little boy called Ralphie. He's 19 months old um, and he's brilliant. And then we have another one on the way in July. Um, so, got a, uh, we don't know if it's a boy or a girl yet, um, but really looking forward to that. And yeah, it's, it's nice to have a, a brilliant family. Yeah. It must be hard, though, being away from home. So how, how, how does one deal with that? Someone in your position who has to travel all the time and you've got young kids, wife at home. No, I think it's, it is tough. Don't get me wrong. It's, you know, people look at uh, professional sport, professional cricket, and you think it's a, it's a great life. And, you know, don't get me wrong. It's, we're very lucky to do what we do. But I think the amount of time that we spend away from home, um, especially from our families and our, and our children, that it's... You know, it does get tough sometimes, especially when you're not in form um, yeah. and, you, and you're not doing well. I think that's when you you probably need your family the most, and you can miss home when you you know you're away in different countries. So as it is tough, but also it's a it's a very privileged mm. job, and um, we're very very lucky to do what we do. Right, Liam, it's time for our uh, quick singles round. Right. So okay. you're going to have to clear your mind. Right. And looking uh, forward to it. Let's see how well you do. Well, let's see how well I do. I've got them in my mind now. <laughs> I've been preparing about cool. this. Our next round. Okay, Liam, as I said before, clear your mind. You're going to have to answer. So I've just got to answer one thing, mm -hmm. one question. Right, okay. no, I'll ask questions and answer them however you feel like okay. answering them. It's up to you. Okay. Yep. Are, are you ready? I'm ready. All right. There's a song that's stuck in your head right now. Coldplay, Yellow. Really? Yeah. Oh, it's quite old. It's a good song. Yeah. I've listened to it a bit over here. Well, you are 30. Yeah. <laughs> One thing you love that everybody else hates? It's uh, a tough question. Yeah. Um, one thing I love that You've everybody else hates. You've got a ladybug in your hate, by the way, I'm just saying. <laughs> no, but um, it's fine. <laughs> one thing I love that everybody else hates. Uh, like Marmite, maybe? No, I don't know. <laughs> Next question, move on. I don't okay. know. Your favorite food item? Favorite food. I do like a good McDonald's. Right. Now, the share. strongest player. As in what? The strong, physically, strongest. Like someone physically. you would not want to mess with. Wouldn't want to mess with. Um, oh, I think Karen Pollard. He's a big. He's a big lad. Yeah. You don't want to get punched from him. <laughs> Your favorite Pakistani cricketer? My favorite Pakistani cricketer is um, Shahid Afridi because mm. I've played a lot with him at Hampshire. Um, you know, he's a very good person. The best Pakistani bowler? Ever or now? Ever and Ever. now. Oh, ever. So again, it's a tough question, um, but I think Wazim Akram or Wakar Yunus were obviously extremely Either or. good. Either or. And then now, well, I think there's loads. There's, there's so many. Um, there's, there's too many to name that are here. There's, there's a load of very good bowlers. Mm. Describe the World Cup win in one word. Unbelievable. Mm. The thing you love most about Pakistan? Uh, I think the food. Um, mm. The food is the food is very tasty. I think in, until you come here, um, yeah, you have to experience it. It's brilliant. Okay. Ben Stokes or Andrew Flintoff, the better all-rounder? I'd say Ben Stokes. Five wickets or a century? Century. Okay. Power or finesse? <sighs> More finesse for me, I think. Okay. <laughs> One thing that you weren't, one thing 
that you weren't prepared for when you became an adult? Something that you just weren't prepared for? Children, I think. <laughs> Having kids. Yeah, I don't think anyone anyone tells you or teaches you how to how to mm. look after your first baby. So that that would definitely be one thing. Okay. okay. Fine. Now the best batsman according to you, Virat Kohli, Stephen Smith, uh, Kane Williamson. Uh, Virat. I'll throw Joe Root in there as well. Virat Kohli. Without a doubt? Definitely, yeah. Right. Yeah. Finally, Liam Dawson, being involved with Peshawar Zalmi, being a part of Peshawar Zalmi, what does it mean to you? Oh, an honour. I, I said before, to, to come back to the franchise for you know my third year in a row, um, you know, it's good to have that affiliation to the team and, um, and it's, a, it's a very family, you know, family franchise. Everybody is made to feel welcome and mm -hmm. I said before, it's a, it's a fun and very exciting franchise to be involved in. Liam Dawson, this was great fun. Thank you very much. Really enjoyed. Cheers, thank you, Liam.